Hi everyone, it's Nick. Welcome, welcome back to my channel. Okay, so in this video, we are doing a Buy This, Not That for Wayfair. Now, if you're not familiar with the Buy This, Not That series, what I do is I tend to pick a particular retailer, in this case, Wayfair, and I talk to you about which ones I think are worth your time and money, which ones you should buy, and which ones are not worth your time and money. All products and everything, timestamps are all in the description down below, so you can always just zip around the video, and you can check out the affiliate links down below for all the products that I talk about here in this video. Now, let's talk about Wayfair. So Wayfair has some interesting items. Wayfair appeals to a very wide audience, an audience where um, everybody kind of finds their place on Wayfair, which is great, but it also means that it's a minefield of not awesome products. And that is what the purpose of this video is, is to just sort of give you my opinion on which ones are worth your time and which ones are not. Okay, so first up on my list is the Borstal Oak Sideboard. Okay, so this is beautiful. By the way, I'll also just let you know that because this is Wayfair, they also, they also have a lot of sister brands like Joss and Main and All Modern. I'm going to be touching on all those in this video as well. So this is actually from Joss and Main and is a really beautiful oak sideboard. This thing is gorgeous. It is in a wonderful raw oak. I think it's really minimal. It's gorgeous. I think it would work really well in like a Japandi space, just a space that really is looking for those natural materials. I love this raw oak wood. I just think it's really gorgeous. So it just has this really classy sort of natural finish to it. And it's just a really great option for storage um, and really beautiful for someone looking for something a little bit more contemporary a little bit more of a minimal look to it, but something that's got that really sort of warm, sort of comfortable feel to it. If you're looking for something that's a little bit more of the Japandi sort of look, it's got that really nice black uh, detailing. And if you know, if you saw my Japandi video, you'll know that little touches of black is really common in that design style or that sort of blended design style. And I think it works really, really well on this cabinet. Okay, next up is the Garrett two-door cabinet. First of all, it's a little bit more traditional, which doesn't inherently mean that it, it's ugly. It's, traditional is not really my taste, but that's fine. We talk about that on this channel. I have an appreciation for all sorts of design styles. What I don't have an appreciation for though is really manufactured distressed wood. I just think it looks really fake, this sort of shabby chic. It's not chic, it's just shabby, but it's manufactured shabby, which is even worse than like regular actual old shabby, which is just more authentic and therefore just a much better fit for most spaces. So there's a few of these actually lurking around Wayfair. It's not hard to find a lot of these painted finishes, shabby chic sort of distressed wood chippy paint sort of things going on on Wayfair. I'll link to a whole bunch of them in the description if you maybe want to laugh. Uh, that's up to you. But uh, yeah, there's just a, there's a few of these and I don't particularly care for them. I don't think they look very chic. I don't think they uh, are really a great option for a lot of people. If you are looking for something a little bit more traditional, then go for something a little bit more rustic. Go for something a little bit more authentic. I touch on that in my Fixing Farmhouse video if you've seen that one. Um, but this one is a miss for me. I'm not going to lie. I don't think that should surprise you, to be honest. It's a miss like a hard miss. Okay, next up is the Scriven floor lamp. This is a brass and black lamp. This is a beautiful floor lamp. I think this is gorgeous. I love that it's not super droopy. Some of these floor lamps I think just look really droopy and I always hit my head on them every time I get up off the couch, which is why I can't stand those. But this one looks really sort of high, which is really beautiful and wonderful for things like task lighting. So this would be good in a bedroom if it's sitting next to your bedside table. Uh, this would be good next to an end table in your living room. So you, if you're reading a book on the couch, it's really cool. It's really chic, kind of works with kind of a mid-century modern look to it, especially if you like like black and gold. I do like that combination. I think it looks quite nice and uh, it's a really beautiful lamp and it is definitely worth checking out. So it also wouldn't look out of place in a glam space. Again, sometimes glam I think is a style that benefits from mixing with other uh, interior design styles, but I think this would look really nice if you're looking for a little bit more of a glamorous look, just kind of maybe um, pair it with some more natural finishes and things so it doesn't feel too, too glammy and it doesn't look a little bit too um, tacky. Okay, for my don't buy, I'm gonna do the Anaya LED light. Okay, so here's the thing with LED lights. They are great for providing ambient lighting in the background. They're meant to provide a really gorgeous soft glow. That is why uh, they're usually diffused or always diffused. That's why they're usually hidden because they provide sort of a little bit of an ambient glow without necessarily being visible. You don't necessarily need to see these LED lights. The problem with this particular light is that, first of all, they're showing it off with multicolored, which is great if it's you're running a nightclub. It's great if you're a, a like a YouTube gamer, like if you have a YouTube gaming channel and you want a light in the background, like great, then this is a great option for you. But if you want this in your home, I wouldn't really advise it. I think you're better off with LED lights that are hidden to provide that soft ambient glow. But this light is a little bit too in your face. It's a bit too colorful. Uh, it's got this 
crystal look to it, which is an interesting option. And I think just looks a little bit cheesy and kind of not very chic. I think you're better off going for something that's a typical light that you would see, like the one I just talked about. Or again, if you really are set on doing LEDs, awesome. Just hide them and diffuse them. And that way they provide a soft glow, which is a lot nicer than this big, bold, in your face LED strip. Okay, next up on my buy list. This is the Marble Falls Black and Cream Area Rug. It's got this really gorgeous geometric pattern to it. This is quite eye-catching. I would personally recommend, unless you really like playing with lots of different pattern, in which ways like find your own like signature style, that's super cool. I think if you are looking to sort of pare this down, it's such a kind of big moment. It's got so much contrast into it with that black and cream. Maybe you might want to pair it with something that's a little bit more subdued, something like what they've done in this photo, where you can see they've kind of paired it with much more simple mid-century modern furniture pieces, which I think is probably a much safer route to go. But it's really gorgeous. It is a wool rug. It is hand woven, so it's ticking those boxes for me. And uh, just really feels like a really nice, uh, beautiful rug, but it's kind of fun and catchy and playful. And it's just got this really interesting contrast detailing. So definitely worth checking out. And it's on the buy list. Okay, now on to the don't buy is this Shankle area rug. There's a lot going on in this rug, isn't there? There's a lot going on. There are squares, there are circles. It's just there's a lot of mixed shapes and a lot of colors that I think just look really dated. So these are these kind of warm, rusty earth tones, which are just make it feel a little bit dated. If you are looking to create something with a bit more of a traditional color palette, so you're really kind of leaning into those kind of warmer neutrals, I think going with something like a jute rug or something of a more simple color palette will probably serve you better than this bit of a hot mess that we have sitting here. Interesting to note, by the way, so this is actually a polypropylene uh, machine-made rug, and it's actually quite expensive compared to the rug that I just talked about. So again, sometimes it's just looking into those details. Even if you like park the style for a minute, just because it's maybe not my taste is, you know, fine. But even if you look at the quality that you're necessarily getting, so I actually think this rug is quite expensive for the value that you're getting. I think you'd be better off going with something that's maybe even a hand knotted rug or a wool rug for this price. I honestly think it's a bit overpriced for what you're getting. Okay, next up on the buy list, let's talk armchairs. So let's look at this Glinda armchair. I think this is really beautiful. It's this natural wood with this walnut finish and this leather seat. It reminds me a lot of the wishbone chair. So if you're not familiar with the wishbone chair, it's kind of an iconic Scandinavian design. So it's a really beautiful chair. They're not cheap, of course, but uh, definitely still worth checking out, especially if you're looking for something that's a little bit more unique and interesting and kind of a nice alternative to your typical wishbone. I love this chair. Beautiful in a Scandinavian space, a mid-century space. Uh, especially if you're going for a mid-century look that's airing more on the side of natural finishes. I think this is really, really gorgeous and worth a look. Okay, now on to the don't buy is the Pretor upholstered dining chair. It's not so much for me that this is a little bit less on the sort of chic contemporary style, which is just more my preference. Really my main issue with this and my main justification for it being on this list is that it is made of this like faux leather. So we've talked about faux leather in the past. It's in one of my regrets. I think I talked about in my previous videos. I've regretted every time I've bought faux leather because in the end I can just tell by looking at this photo this chair is going to peel it is going to crack it is not going to stand the test of time and the second that it does it will look dated like the second that it does you can't really get away with anything on these if they just crack a little bit or they just look a little bit warped they never look good for long term I think you're better off investing in quality materials that are going to be there for a long period of time so definitely a miss for me on this one but next up on the buy list is a really sexy coffee table and this is the Kingsbury coffee table. I love this gold detailing. I feel like that lamp I talked about earlier would work with this. Uh, you've got some black detailing as well, and you've got a real marble top. I sometimes find on Wayfair or other retailers, they will use sort of a fake marble top. They'll use faux marble, and uh, this is real marble. So you can definitely look at, you know, why it's maybe justifying its price point a little bit. I think it's this gorgeous Carrera marble. I love a marble coffee table. I think it's beautiful. I think if you can go and you can afford a natural stone, I think it's a really gorgeous statement piece, and this definitely makes a statement. I I think it's really, really cool. This is kind of my style. You guys know that. I love this coffee table. I think it's really cool. But you know what I don't care for and I don't think it's really cool is this Kate coffee table. So glass furniture is a miss for me, generally speaking. And that's most, especially a coffee table. And that's because they're a hazard. That's because you're going to trip and fall on this. And they just look really dated to me. Glass has a place for sure in interior design. Uh, it can be a really wonderful material, but I just don't think it really works in a coffee table. This one especially, I mean, it's 
it's broken up with this weird shape. You've got this opaque frosted glass on the bottom. Uh, so now you've got two different types of glass on the same coffee table. You've got that green edge that's on the side of the glass, which I don't particularly care for. It's got like some detailing on the edging, which I don't really like as well. I don't think this coffee table is really worth your time or money. I just think you can do better. I think there's other coffee tables like I just talked about and other ones out of more natural materials or different materials that I think make a lot more sense than glass. Okay, now let's talk about the Morris sideboard, which is this beautiful wood sideboard. So it's made of real wood as well as some engineered wood. It just looks really sleek and clean. I really, really love this. This looks like something CB2 would come out with. I feel like they might have one similar. Um, it's just really, really a gorgeous sideboard. Definitely worth checking out. Looks like it's a little bit more on the pricier side. I'm gonna warn you before you click on that affiliate link. It's a really beautiful sideboard and honestly comparable to what you'd expect to see at other retailers like CB2 or Crate and Barrel or West Elm or anything like that but it's a really beautiful sideboard. I love the shape of it. I love this a bit of a statement. It's kind of got like this really chunky paneling to it and I think it's really, really cool. But what is not so cool is this Louis sideboard. So let's talk about mirrored furniture. You know, we've, we're, we're hitting on all the high notes here in this video. Mirrored furniture just to me looks like a fun house. It looks a little bit like it, it just, it plays with the light and it plays with your perception and not in a good way. So sometimes mirrors are great. Sometimes mirrors can open up a space. We've talked about that. You know that mirrors can be a wonderful tool in your toolkit to sort of make your space feel more open and just sort of really play with light. On furniture, it doesn't really play with light in a good way. It's confusing. It doesn't provide the eye a space to rest and it just looks really busy and unnecessarily so because it's now bouncing light all across your room. So even though the shape of it is a little bit more traditional, that's fine. I don't really have an issue with that. What I have an issue with is all this mirrored paneling that's on the side of it. I don't really like it. If you're gonna go for traditional, I think there are other options on Wayfair and other retailers that are definitely more worth your while. Or if you wanna go more contemporary, um, I've given you a couple of options in this video, but there are loads out there that are way better than this one. So definitely give this one a skip in my opinion. Okay, that's it for me for today, guys. I've actually done a few of these by this, not that. I've done one for Ikea. I've done one for Zara. I'm gonna link a playlist and you can check those out here. And uh, that's it. I'll see you over in that playlist and you got a couple of videos to catch up on. So I'll see you over there. Thanks, bye.